This is the uh, highlight of the show. It's the uh, Stork and Ariel, which means it's a lightweight uh, road frame, which has four properties. One end, it is light, stiff, it has a lot of comfort, but the main purpose is also to have a great aerodynamic. So what we have made is that all the tubing are aerodynamic. If you cut them horizontal, you have an aerodynamic tube shape. Normally, the aero tube is aerodynamic this way, this way, and this way. And we have cut the entire frame, so if you would cut it in slices, the aero tube is horizontal. With this, we achieve a very, very stiff head tube section. We achieve a very stiff BB section, and we create a very comfortable rear end. Very interesting is also our new uh, patent applied seat clamp mechanism, which is totally invisible. So basically you mount it from underneath and the entire mechanic sits within the frame. If you want to achieve best of all properties, like having stiffness, comfort, aerodynamic, the seat post delivers you a very large portion of your comfort. So if you have an aero post, you can't basically create that. But to give you an example, with this new seat clamping mechanism, we don't have the overlapping of the post and with the seat tube. So the post gets more flex, plus we have the seat stays at the lower section, so it creates a much more comfortable ride for the bike as well. The bike as it is built here uh, weighs 5.9 kilogram without pedals, and also new is the Stork Obermeier version, which means it has an aerodynamic front hub, so also to achieve a better aerodynamic on the front wheel. Is it DI2 compatible? All of our frames are uh, now mechanical and uh, electronic shifting compatible. Okay. So basically we have different outlets. So uh, the bike is uh, not the only one, like every model now is for electronic and mechanical shifting. Right. What's the thinking behind integrating the brakes on this bike? Um, the key point is uh, everybody's trying to reduce the weight on the frame and I feel it doesn't make sense to use uh, you know, a higher grade carbon fiber and to make it thinner and thinner then the frame gets a much more brittle ride plus the material is quite, uh, I would say, um, difficult to make a long lifespan of it, you know, when you hit an obstacle or anything. So I feel it's a better way to integrate systems like brakes into the frame and get some weight saving out from that instead of making the tube thinner and thinner and thinner. So to give you an idea, with the brake arms, the weight is 50 grams. So we are saving 100 gram compared to normal Dura-Ace. And if you then take the frame and you deduct the 100 grams of weight saving, you have 100 grams, but you even have a better braking performance because there's a two to one ratio to the brakes, so you get more braking uh, force as well. And one question I'm sure a lot of people would ask is, how easy are the brakes then to, to, to get out, you know, to get out, to change a pad? or The, pad, the pad basically has a little uh, screw here, yeah. so you can take an Allen wrench and you can slide it out, so that is quite easy. But to adjust the brakes, it takes quite some time to get used. So that's the only disadvantage. Everything what's integrated, of course, is for maintenance, a little bit different, and people yeah. have to really uh, get used to it. Okay. The 0.7 was basically uh, winning or competing five for five years in the Tour Magazine test and was dominating uh, the test. And this year we have renewed it by having electronic and mechanical, yeah. but also the press fit uh, BB and the bike is... And in a voice club. And the um, bike basically uh, is also renewed. So now we are going in the seventh year yeah. and we still keep the 0.7, but it's for us it's a... Uh, it's a timeless product, it's a timeless And for product. those who don't know, the Tour um, ratings, Tour magazine, is, is that's a big uh, 
a, a big accolade in Germany. Very, very big. Yeah. Uh, you could say in all German-spoken countries. What Tour basically uh, measured is, in the beginning, they measured weight and stiffness, BB yeah. and uh, head tube. Yeah. Then they added the comfort to it. Yeah. Then they measured the stiffness of the fork. Then they added the comfort of the fork. And now the newest thing is they added the aerodynamic to it. Okay. So you have a, a very complex uh, measurement system and basically then you can calculate what is the best frame or, or bike in the world. And uh, uh, they measured 2,000 frames in 10 years. Uh -huh. And basically uh, this year they had the 12th best in an aero tunnel, wind tunnel test again. And we were quite happy because we had two under the top six. Okay. Yeah. So it shows that uh, over the last uh, ten years we have done a good job. Consistently. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. For uh, over uh, uh, 17 years we had a Scenario Pro. Mm -hmm. Then the entry level was a Vision Lite. Right. And now we created a frame which is using some of the tubes of a Scenario Pro. Yeah. We created some new tubes to make the frame lighter, like the new seat stays, which add comfort. We have the uh, chain stays from the Scenario Pro. We have the down tube from the Scenario Pro. We have the seat tube from the Scenario Pro. We have a full smooth welded frame. Mm -hmm. We offer two different fork options, and the frame is made for electronic and mechanical shifting. And I also can tell you, since we started with the bike, it became like the scenario, very close top seller. We offer it in a uh, class speed uh, finish with uh, a gunmetal anodized, and uh, it also has some laser logos, or the customer can choose it in any powder coating color. One of the things that we've noticed walking around the show is a few more higher end aluminium bikes coming yes, back. Yes. Uh, the key point is that on an uh, aluminium frame you can offer more sizes yeah. because of the mold cost basically, plus it is quite timeless. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And uh, we still see a lot of customers which ask still that they want to get a road bike versus a carbon fiber. And these days aluminium, the, the, obviously once it had a reputation for a harsh ride, but that's really a, a thing of the past, would you say? Uh, yes and no. It's still more difficult to get a very comfortable ride of an, uh, out of an aluminium frame. Mm -hmm. But as you see, we have changed the shape and the style of the stays. We have our comfort post yeah. and we have a very comfortable fork. So basically compared to an old traditional mm -hmm. um, uh, aluminium bike, the comfort is much better, much greater, but it still could not reach, for example, the level of a fast scenario 0.7 or even an Enario. So do you think there's any more, is there any more development these days going into aluminium tubing in terms of what, yes. what it can yes. offer? Yes. Yes. Um, I would say there was a learning curve. Uh, companies came from metal, mm -hmm. then they went to composite, yeah. which allowed a lot more freedom in designs. Yeah. And now we have the benefit in the next stage that we try to manipulate metal in into way, different yeah. shapes and to create different riding characteristics. Where would you say bike design and technology is going to go next in terms of the road bike? System integration is a very big point and for me also the uh, interfaces to the human uh, person. So basically everything where you have contact, you know, uh, we will work very hard on new and innovative things like handlebar. We have a new handlebar I can uh, show you. Uh, I think saddles are very interesting uh, things to work on and uh, system integration just to save some weight or to make the aerodynamic better. So uh, I think we have still some uh, room there to uh, develop and to go forward.